I've been finagling with this camera for some time now, but the sun keeps moving, and so we will do with what we have. Hello, hello, my name is Shakia. Um, my favorite car that I've ever had was this yellow punch buggy. Lovely car. And today I practiced reconnection by <clears throat> I practice reconnection. I actually know what I did today. I remembered that last time I came with ashy hands. And you know, that may seem very silly, but I think reconnection can be something as small as remembering what you like. And I don't like ashy hands. <laughs> I enjoy my hands to be moisturized. I don't like the feeling when it's not. So there you go. I've reconnected with myself today by remembering what I had, which is lotion, and <laughs> what I enjoy, which is moisturized hands. Look at that. Mm. So I'll even show you the picture again so that you can have like moisturized hands while I do it. Pa pow. My yellow punch buggy. Gone but never forgotten. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Um, this video is part of a series titled Hope and Expression, and I think part of the long-term goal of this video series is to create a more interconnected community, um, and I think that hope is a huge topic that, you know, is important because hope doesn't always, or, you know, it's not necessary to have hope only when you are happy. You can also have hope when you are depressed. Um, and part of my goal of creating a larger and more interconnected community is the premise, I suppose, that you don't have to go through it alone. I knew someone who passed away due to his depression. How do I frame this? I can't get rid of depression. People have depression, but I refuse to believe that there can't be a time <laughs> when people who have depression won't lean on others for support and see that there is support around them and see that there is community around them. Yes. So before we get started, I'll give you time to hit that subscribe button while I drink my tea. Today I have Egyptian licorice mint. It's Egyptian licorice mint. I'll try to be consistent with these videos. Try, keyword. All right. First question was, what does hope feel like? And the anonymous respondee or interviewee responded with, I have struggles with suicidal ideation and depression my entire life, so when I think hope, I think that there is something out there for me, something that keeps me living. I hope every day I live to see another day, but when the darkness comes, I go with it. What was the last thing you hoped for? The last thing I hoped for was to have long-term happiness. Have you ever lost hope? I lose hope in myself when I shut out my feelings. This next question was about connection, and it was, have you lost connection with someone um, and you're hesitant in reaching out to them? And they responded, the person who I ponder over is my old boss who has taught me what love really is and what it's like to be happy. The next question was kind of a two-parter, and it was, there was a bird flying by. Um, the question was, what is the reason for the disconnect? And then the second part is, consider that reason a subjective truth. How can you reframe it as an objective truth? And they responded, our relationship frayed after poor managers failed to help our store and that led to our store closing. After the closing, me and my boss are not so close anymore. 
So say you lived a long adventure-filled life, filled with love, filled with hardships, twists and turns and rights and lefts and ups and downs and side to side. <laughs> what do you come back as? And I love a good metaphor, so you can think of these as is, the, the options that I gave, or you can think of them um, a little more deeply, as if you were in AP Lit class, you know? So do you come back as a musically vibrant whale that can only see in shades of gray? Do you come back as a large and curious crow that thrives on solving puzzles? Or do you come back as a tree? I think there's a tree behind me. A tree with interconnected roots that provide support, stability, homes, um, yeah, a lot. And they said, I would come back as a tree to help others. Helping others is important. We don't live long. Why don't we help someone in poverty if we can? Why don't we support people in the education system? Why don't we help people in active addiction in a safe way? Helping others is so important. What's the, what's the purpose in life if we can't help the next person suffering? We all have pain or something or someone that has hurt us. Why can't we use that pain or trauma to help others? For example, a family with a father who beats on their wife and attacked his children. The wife and the children now have trauma. The children grow up to be resentful over the mother, and one child helps and supports others in a traumatic situation. However, the other child turns into someone who finds the hate in everyone. Why is this? Why do certain traumas affect children the way they do? Why doesn't that other child want to help families and friends just like their sibling? It's a question I ask myself every day. Part of the video is being um, recorded after the fact because I forgot to mention it as well. But I did ask this in on person, what is your most natural way? I'm sorry if you can hear the bees, they're living their best lives, can't stop them. Um, what is your best way of expression or your mode of communication? And they said that they tend to use the mirror effect a lot, and so they change how they express and how they communicate based on the other person's reactions and mood. And that was the end of that interview. As promised, I won't interject my comments afterwards, just because since the interview is done, they won't have a chance to respond. Um, but I will just say one thing. And that is healing, all healing is not created equal. Yeah. Um, if you've made it this far into the video, uh, maybe comment down below. What is your favorite way to get around? Do you like to walk? Do you like the train, buses, cars, skating, rollerblading, parasailing? I'm trying to think of other ways. Um, yeah, you get the picture. Um, what was I gonna say? Yes, if you'd like to contact me to be part of this series, you can either contact me in my email, right there. Pay attention to the spelling. It's lavender speaks, l a v n d r dot s p e a k s at gmail dot com. You can also reach me here. <laughs> Um, my TikTok, and you can also reach me here. That sound is fun. My Instagram. Um, this interview is not only available in English, but it is available in French, in Arabic, American Sign Language, and Spanish. I will see you next time, hopefully. And until then, stay you, stay black, and stay hydrated. Your brain will thank you.